Okay. Uh, we're going to listen to the talk, Joining Forces, Collaborative Advocacy for Digital Rights, uh, Insight from the Fifth. F5 Alliance. Uh, if you want to say your names. Yes, hi, I'm Lara from Wikimedia Deutschland. Hi, I'm Pia Zambetsky from Algorithm Watch. Okay. Thank you guys so much for showing up. I know it's been a long couple of days and we're the, the very last round, but um, yeah, we, we really hope you will learn something with us today and we're also very curious to hear from you guys. Um, so just a quick heads up, we know it's late and we really um, want to make it short and sweet so that everybody can make it to the closing ceremony on time as well. Um, and so I guess let's jump right in, shall we? Okay, um, so we've already talked a lot about um, advocacy and more specifically collaborative advocacy over the past couple of days. And we um, highlighted the importance of working together with different organizations, be that really close partners, but also more of like unlikely alliances. And so um, when we heard about this year's uh, topic of Wikimania collaborating, um, we, we thought, okay, we need to talk about the beautiful alliance that we've built in Germany uh, three years ago, which we call the F5 Alliance. And some of you might uh, get the reference that um, the name comes from the F5 button on the computer keyboard, which is refresh. So the aim of our alliance is to um, refresh the digital policy space in Germany and center the, the public good in, in German digital policy. And so um, I want to give a huge shout out to my colleague um, Pia, who joined us today, because she's not actually from Wikimedia Germany, like myself, but she's from one of our partner organizations, um, that is Algorithm Watch. And she's um, going to actually introduce herself and the organization, but also all of the other organizations that we have in our alliance um, in a second. So stage is yours. Thank you so much for coming. Yeah, thanks for having me and for being so nice uh, to somewhat of an outsider uh, at the Wikimania, but I had a great time so far. And yeah, we start off uh, always with uh, Algorithm Watch because we sort the names of the organizations in order uh, of the alphabet usually to prevent uh, <laughs> struggles when it comes to uh, hierarchies. So that's the first lesson right here, uh, how to have a functioning alliance, uh, have it fair and equal. Um, and Algorithm Watch, uh, probably most of you don't know us, we are a Berlin-based uh, NGO. Um, we also have a sister organization in Switzerland that's based in Zurich. Uh, so we're kind of expanding also, um, yeah, thanks to the AI hype, to be honest, uh, we were right there when it all um, happened a few years earlier. So we um, um, talking about AI regulation mostly, and we also do um, yeah, advocacy campaigns, uh, trying to involve the public uh, in this discussion on AI and how it impacts our society, um, and we contribute uh, a lot to that debate with uh, journalistic research as well, and um, yeah, just um, try to uh, accompany the process of finding good ways to regulate AI. So that's Algorithm Watch in a nutshell. Uh, let me know if you want to know more about us later on. Uh, but for now, we continue with our second organization. Um, it's the Gesellschaft für Freiheitsrechte, which roughly translates to Society for Civil Rights. They have a bit of a broader um, work area. So they are, in essence, a, a strategic litigation organization. So they um, try to uh, improve access to civil rights uh, in Germany mostly, but they also ventured out to uh, more like European uh, cases where um, people contacted them, for example, in the case of um, sensitive user information being used on LinkedIn, for example, so they just won kind of a, a case uh, with their Center for User Rights that they only founded last year. And they um, yeah, defend civil liberties, as it says here, to promote democracy and civil society interests. Um, also have a strong focus on uh, surveillance practices, try to, for example, um, get uh, the state out of uh, mobile phones of migrants that uh, the state asked them to hand over, like those kinds of practices, they really have a strong look into and have really great successes uh, in defending civil uh, liberties in Germany. Next one is the Open Knowledge Foundation Germany. I think many of you uh, know about Open Knowledge Foundation in general. We collaborate uh, in this alliance with the German chapter. Um, I think you probably know much about them already. Um, 
open knowledge, very much in line with uh, Wikipedia, uh, Wikimedia's mission as well. They have a several nice project uh, running, uh, especially at the Germany uh, level, for example. I think the most famous one maybe uh, is Jugendhakt. It's very a nice youth-oriented uh, collaborative um, project, but also Fragdenstaat, which is like a project where they uh, introduced a few years ago this website where you can really use the uh, freedom of information law very practically and make good use of it. So that's probably those um, that they are most famous for. Um, yep. And then we have Reporters Without Borders, also a Germany chapter. And then I think it portrays nicely as well that we have a very wide range of digital rights defenders uh, in our a group of uh, civil society organizations. I think you know probably about them. Press freedom as its core, obviously, in their mission. Um, and also in Germany, they, for example, look closely at security law and how it's uh, transforming, or not so much, to be honest, and trying to um, yeah, get that to change. And Wikimedia Germany, of course. Uh, I think you all know about them. Um, Lara can probably talk more about the all great uh, projects. To be honest, I struggle sometimes to get an overview of all the great work, but I know about David's work here in the, in the front, uh, about public uh, broadcasters and the connection to Wikimedia. Um, but also I'm kind of interested to do, uh, uh, learn more about education and AI and what's the, what the Wikimedia Germany team is doing on that subject, to be honest, so I might uh, question those. Uh, uh, as well after this uh, session, because I just learned more about it recently. Yes, so much for the overview, and now what do we advocate on? Yeah, exactly. You summarized it, I think, well in the beginning. So the 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 moment in time where we uh, found each other was the, uh, founded the alliance was for the uh, past uh, federal elections in Germany. So this was kind of a good time for us to to look at how digital policy looks like in Germany and that we uh, identified that it needs kind of a refresh, um, especially because of different political uh, forces wanting to prioritize maybe uh, economic uh, development um, under the name of innovation, for example, of industry policy as well. So we really thought like, okay, we need to put this uh, at the center here to highlight that it's really, it should be the common good and civil rights uh, protection that should be at the center of digital policy to make it function for everyone in uh, Germany as well. And I think those are probably the, the headlines that sum us up uh, best and when it comes to what uh, topics we cover. So the first is the protection of privacy and digital security. I stressed that earlier, I think in our alliance is probably Reporters Without Borders and the Society for Civil Rights that work work mostly on this, uh, on these subjects. Uh, effective regulation of platforms and AI, one of our core topics, but also um, other organizations have been uh, working on that a lot in our alliance over also the uh, topic of Digital Services Act implementation in Germany. So we collaborated very strongly on this one. And uh, yeah, open data, open source, open content, I think you know uh, which uh, organizations are strong as this, but also transparency at all levels. So this is also very much a, a shared theme uh, among the organizations because it's so foundational to the work in general. Um, yeah, and uh, the last point I think is also really um, relevant. Uh, we strive for really better access and better structures for civil society on the whole, so beyond our alliance, but also for our alliance and partners uh, that we um, include also from the, let's say, fringes of uh, digital uh, civil society in Germany and to have more like uh, structures implemented to uh, contribute to policy process not only now but also in the future to have a more sustained uh, involvement of civil society and that really, it also really helps in that case to work together to have a stronger say. Yeah, um, and that actually builds a perfect bridge to the next point because um, people oftentimes ask who had the idea, how did this um, come about? And to be honest, we have to disappoint you if you were wondering um, how exactly it was that the Alliance got started because nobody really knows. But um, what all of the organizations were facing at the time was um, a really a, a need for a structure um, 
to actually get in touch with politicians and um, talk about the issues that they have come up. And uh, they had previously worked before one-on-one -on -one, or sometimes even in constellations of two or three, so they all knew each other very well um, when the alliance was founded. But at some point, I guess, people just sat together and um, decided that uh, it would make perfect sense since we have those shared goals that everybody sort of knew about. Um, to, to form the alliance and just join forces to be a, a stronger voice in a, a digital policy sphere. And so now, since maybe some of you might be interested in um, starting your own alliances or are already working in some, we um, thought about the, the facts that might also help you to get this kind of work started. And so um, we said that the basics um, to do this kind of thing is to establish trust. Nothing um, works without the trust. Um, and of course, you also need to identify common ground. That that goes without saying, because you don't. if you don't really have any shared causes, then, then there's not really a point, I guess, which is also something, I mean, sometimes people get all excited, but then I feel like if there is no common ground, it's also important to say, okay, no, maybe this isn't the best idea, but if you do have common ground, like us, then go ahead, start something. Um, also, what, of course, ideals and um, values and missions are super nice, but what really helps is um, resources and also funding. And we are fortunate enough to have um, the German Mercato Foundation funding our project. Um, they, they fund a lot of work in the digital rights um, sphere and uh, yeah we were also able to to convince them um, by the the need to build up these structures and have a strong voice um, coming from German digital society so that really does help and if there um, are ways for you to to find resources to tap into when it comes to funding um, definitely recommend doing that and also last but not least and we talked about this in the other advocacy sessions as well obviously nothing is possible without infrastructure and that the same goes for building an alliance like this. So um, this is really basic things like setting up mailing lists, setting up a Google Share Drive, but it's really something that when people get excited about something, you tend to forget about those processes and also think about how are we going to communicate with each other and what are going to be our modes of decision making and all these things. So it's essentially in a way like starting an organization in itself, except it just contains multiple organizations. And that is something to really be mindful and aware of when starting processes like this. And I mean, you obviously also st still figure a lot of things out as you go, but I would really recommend just thinking about these things from the very um, beginning on. And um, to give you a little bit of a better understanding, of what it is that we actually do and the tools and formats that we use. Um, we have this little overview here. So at the very core of our work lies the structured dialogue with um, policymakers. And um, a format that we have established in that sense is that we hold four annual um, parliamentary roundtables with them. Uh, that we actually do while breakfast is being served, and I'm going to dive a little more into that in a second. Um, the other aim is to um, also not just have those roundtables established because they um, we talk about varying topics, topics, but obviously if there are laws that are um, being um, processed in the parliament, but also the executive branch, we want to be there from the very start to the very finish, and we will pretty much do whatever it takes in the meantime to to um, meet our meet our goals. Um, sometimes that even includes a strategic PR, even though in the very beginning of the alliance there was a decision that was made that is, uh, we do not uh, communicate together publicly because that's just going to complicate things. We try really hard not to, but sometimes we need to. So, um, and it is more co uh, complicated when uh, you do communicate to the outside, because obviously every um, organization has their own mode of communication, and um, different processes set up for that. So we're really trying to limit this to when it's absolutely necessary. But sometimes we have to do it. And also, of course, we're still cooperating with other NGOs and other actors, both. Um, as an alliance, but also 
um, uh, as uh, the single or, uh, singular organizations that are in there because um, we, we need as many voices as possible and of course we have this great an alliance now but this doesn't mean that we're not still working together really, really closely with others. And here's just um, some pictures. Um, the head of VMDE, Francisca, uh, talking to a federal minister. Then uh, we handed over a list of demands to the, um, what do you think it's called, Digital Minister Conference? Do you have an idea? Uh, so it's the conference of digital mm -hmm. representatives of the different federal states, yeah. basically. Yeah, true. It's very new, uh, so very we were new. there for the first time. <laughs> we were there for the first time, and th there was one instance where we communicated publicly uh, as well, I guess. And we also do something like network nights, hold interesting panel uh, sessions like the one that you see down there. So it's a very broad range. Um, of things that we do. And uh, um, now back to our core format, though, which you can see here, the parliamentary roundtable. Um, essentially, we, we gather parliamentarians together at 8 in the morning, and everybody hates it, but uh, it's, the, it's really the time where um, the calendars of the parliamentarians uh, allow for these kinds of discussions to happen, unfortunately. So, so we make use of that time, and um, people are showing up, so, so that's actually great. But one of the challenges that we face when doing this is um, we're trying to alternate between the different democratic parties um, in the German in Parliament when um, hosting them because we always need a host from a party um, so that we can actually hold the, the round table inside the Parliament, but then also um, alternating between uh, our Alliance members and their um, topics of, of focus. And also all of this, of course, needs to um, be timed well with ongoing laws and discussions. So it is a bit complicated to, to organize them, but still um, we've established established it as a really successful format and um, yeah it's it's going really great I feel like the the details we can skip because th there's not that much um, time left but as I said it's uh, the, even though it's super early it is uh, um, a good time to gather parliamentarians and their assistants and um, it is also comparably cheap. Um, so so that's something to keep in mind because uh, as NGOs we don't have as much resources to throw big fancy gala dinners and um, that's uh, comparably, um, yeah. Like the other lobbyists. <laughs> like the other lobbyists, exactly. Um, nice way to do it. Um, okay, and we don't want to brag but um, we have had uh, um, quite some successes over the last three years, and I think we don't take that much time to celebrate, but sometimes, uh, and I mean, when I put together these numbers, I realized, wow, it's only been three years, but still, um, we hosted 12 exchanges and discussion formats with politicians. We had countless um, background discussions with MPs and their assistants. We published 13 publications, which is a lot of uh, publications, uh, um, and we extended our activities. So technically, our aim was to mostly focus on the German federal level, but we actually ended up also taking it to the German state level and just um, did a publication and are now about to do a workshop in Brussels on the European level. Um, yeah, and also, of course, we uh, we are always present at Germany's um, big digital uh, society, uh, society festival, which is Republika, and we had a stand there that you're going to see photos from in a second. And the important thing to remember with this, and it really shows the synergies that this sets free, is that we do all of this on top of the work that we all do as organizations. So this is not everything we do, and we all still have multiple other areas that we work on, but that's just, um, yeah, what, what the Alliance enables. And I think we can be a little bit proud of that. Now over to you. Very well said, yeah. Yeah, and maybe to um, tie it back to uh, what Lara mentioned in the beginning, like what did we need to start off? Uh, we also thought about what does it need to, to keep it alive, <laughs> let's say. And we tried to sum it up uh, in a few points. Um, first one definitely being commitment. We all stayed on uh, the journey of being an alliance uh, over the past three years and I think that in itself really paid off to, to 
have a continuous participation in the alliance. Um, also not to extend it uh, to more organizations was also a strategic decision uh, at some point because other uh, NGOs were interested potentially to join as well. But not only is our name F5 and we have five organizations, but also from a strategic standpoint, uh, it made sense to consolidate our structures uh, first and um, continue our investment of time and resources and uh, yeah, make use of that structure. Uh, we're really regularly talking to each other, to be honest. We, um, apart from our small little uh, signal group, uh, we have basically me weekly meetings. One is a shorter one and the other one um, is a longer, really like working meeting of at least three hours. Um, sometimes we have a beer afterwards, so that also helps. Um, and uh, we alternate also uh, the offices, so we really try to, um, yeah, fairly uh, distribute also the necessary resources um, that we all need to invest. So uh, not one organization always has to host us and organize drinks and food, for example. Um, another really uh, important aspect, I think, is flexibility. I think you pointed to that, uh, Lara, as well. So we kind of give ourselves a structure, like we discuss working modes, uh, we discuss uh, also internal procedures on how to, for example, um, draft a uh, press release. Uh, this is done very differently in different organizations. Also, the length is different. Um, who's quoted? Is it always the uh, executive director? Is it also policy managers sometimes uh, having their names in there? Like Those are the differences, let's say, overall. And sometimes uh, the hierarchy is also different. So more or fewer levels of um, decisions um, need to yeah, be considered. So we try to give us guidelines, but then also be patient with each other and um, show some flexibility. Uh, in all that, trust really helps. Uh, I think we had a very solid foundation from the start and it only uh, built up from there. It doesn't mean that we don't ever have discussions. Um, they're very fruitful and necessary, obviously, but we all really act from a place of trusting also the other people's judgments uh, on many subjects. So sometimes we for example, uh, write a statement on like a policy process or, um, for example, ministries proposing a strategy for um, um, discussing, I don't know, research data and how it should be handled. And then two organizations, for example, take a lead in writing that statement and other organizations just decide for themselves, do we want to sign on to this? And in many cases, we agree uh, to sign on as a five. Uh, and publish it as F5 because we also trust in the expertise of partner organizations. So that really makes it more effective, I would say, and really shows um, that we can have strength yeah, together. Logistics, uh, we wouldn't be here probably for uh, if Lara hadn't joined at some point uh, the Alliance because she's really helping a lot uh, with coordinating. That also helps also to have funding to uh, pay another person to um, yeah, really keep an overview of where all the processes are going at the same time in parallel many times and um, to just have a simple tool and infrastructure really helps. What can I say more about logistics? Um, but not to forget, um, there's always the aspect of fun obviously in, in our work and I think we can all be uh, quite lucky uh, or can feel very lucky that there's still a lot of fun even though, um, yeah. Political times might be changing as well. Our work might get harder, but I think we all strive to to have um, yeah fun in the middle of that. I think that was kind of a teaser to the challenges. Yes. Um, so we are currently funded by a private foundation. There's no direct dependence. They don't tell us what to do necessarily, but obviously uh, doing it without them would yeah. Uh, as it's written here, um, probably limit our capabilities. Uh, would result in um, maybe having one person or two people less on the team that really do the coordination work, not only logistically, but also strategically, like thinking what could be the next opportunity for us to, for example, formulate a position on, um, but also, um, yeah, you could do it without it. I and mean, we're not saying you, you need funding to do this, but it definitely helps in maybe the sustaining of the alliance and to keep the work going and make it most effective also in the mid and long term. Um, we also learned maybe over the last three years when we shifted um, gears a bit and tried to address the executive branch a bit more that 
it's kind of a different exercise in many ways. So parliamentarians, they have different motives on why they would want to support your statement. Uh, ministry staff, can it be a bit um, hard to move sometimes because they work in, different, in a different work mode or they uh, face more issues with when it comes to hierarchy, so they have to uh, consult another person above them or it's hard to reach the, the parliamentary sec secretary, for example. Um, but I think we did our best uh, at this so far and it was fairly successful, so we try to stay at it and um, yeah, make use of um, that structure in a way that it always, uh, that it often keeps um, continuous even though uh, political uh, priorities might change. So that's kind of the, the intention here as well. And um, I, what I just alluded to was a political climate changing. Um, we expect it might be a good, bit tougher for us looking ahead in Germany, but I'm sure it applies to maybe some of you as well doing advocacy in other places that you might look to the future and think um, maybe we don't really have a progressive governan, uh, government in place right now. How can we still do advocacy? We would really be interested to hear about your perspectives on this as well. But we still believe that keeping the Alliance active can only serve us, in, honestly, and um, that we can still be stronger together and have also maybe a larger uh, weight um, in the public uh, eye as well. Because if five organizations as a group say something is going wrong, that probably convinces uh, people a bit more as well compared to one organization addressing that issue. And uh, yeah, the last lesson, I think, was um, to uh, finding the sweet spot as well between um, being very active and joining forces in a large team of people you see here. So this was this year's and last year's uh, Republica booth. So this is two separate years, but a similar decoration, uh, as you can see. And um, yeah, we try to uh, we try to grow a tree that lasts <laughs> and that sustains all the weather. So this is the symbol for it, I guess. And um, yeah. Bottom line is just uh, it pays off to to do uh, alliance work, um, have a bigger say in what uh, digital policy is going to look like, and to keep going at it. Yeah, and now we're interested to hear from you uh, questions, but also uh, yeah, share experiences if you like. We are very curious if if you know of similar projects. Maybe yeah. I'm coming to you. I would be interested in hearing which are the subjects uh, that, I, that you're taking to Brussels to discuss on a European scale and which would be the best possible outcome, like if each of you had a wish of what to get through there. Um, so I can actually, uh, actually forward you the paper that we wrote jointly um, uh, because it has all the important uh, subjects in it. I mean, since so much platform regulation is being dealt with in Brussels, um, that's going to be uh, one of the main focus areas. And um, Pia is going to be there to, to discuss that with the lawmakers. But also at this point, I guess since we've not been active, at least um, as an alliance in Brussels before, I think um, it is about getting to know people, establishing trust, because it's not just super important on the inside, but also on the outside, of course. Um, yeah, and uh, you can find the paper on our website or you can send me an email and I will be happy to forward it. I think um, we have uh, divided up into eight categories or so, so it's quite long and we have quite a big list of demands, but we're just going to try to push it into a progressive direction. Uh, you might want to add a QR code so we can access this paper Absolutely. when you put this thing online. Mm -hmm. This sure. might be a good idea. Sure, will do. And Pierre, you want to add to this? Uh, not much. You said most of it, I guess. Uh, I, I just know that um, the knowledge, uh, digital knowledge act, I think, is one of the main Wikimedia demands that you might know of as well. So, uh, bringing in uh, kind of new um, visionary ideas, let's say, but also obviously making demands for enforcement. Uh, I think is also one of the main um, topics because next to the Digital Services Act, that's uh, being enforced now that tackles platforms. Uh, for example, we as Algorithm Watch uh, focus a lot on the AI Act, so that's the kind of um, artificial intelligence first type of regulation. <laughs> and uh, there it also has to do a lot with um, 
yeah, finding the best ways on how to do that. And uh, we're going to have um, some words to say about that as well. Okay, anybody else have a question or also um, if you want to respond to any of the questions that we have here because we are really also very interested in, in learning from you whether you have any experiences that you might want to share with us whether something that we told you actually surprised you maybe you were like, no, I never thought about the, uh, it this way before um, let us know Also, before I forget, um, a little shout out to David over here, who is also from Wikimedia Deutschland and who is actually, because I'm the project manager for the Alliance and in a coordinating role, and he is um, Wikimedia Deutschland's representative to the core working group of the Alliance. So if you have any questions directed at him, um, you can let him know. <laughs> um, Uh, you're employed by who? How, how does that work? Is, it, is one of the organizations like mo a little bit more involved than the others? So that uh, with the overhead and things like that? I mean, we have uh, one strategic coordinator who works with the um, Society for Civil Rights. And yeah, you can talk about your own job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm the, the project manager. So I do the um, operational coordination, I want to say. And I sit at Wikimedia. Um, but I'm really trying to um, keep it neutral. So we have one representative from each of the organizations and I just come on top of that and facilitate the work of everybody. And since I sit at Wikimedia and I, uh, Wikimedia is super close to my heart, um, uh, yeah, the, obviously I'm, I'm a little bit um, just more attached to them, but still within the alliance, I, I try to take a neutral position, uh, position so that it's really even um, evened out between everybody. Anybody else? I don't see any more hands going up and I guess everybody would also love to go down to, to save their seats for the closing ceremony. <laughs> so thank you so, so much for joining us. And again, thank you, Pia, for joining us in Poland, um, coming all the way. Yeah. Feel free to write us emails if you have any further questions and you can find the slides online. <laughs>